Okay. So this is um, this is basically sizing two things. We finished. We did. Uh, was it? Yeah. This week we did motors, guys. For you remember, we did calculation for motors. Now we're going to do calculation for AC systems. The only difference between motors and the air conditioning system is it's a special type of equipment that has a compressor in it. Every time you have a compressor, it makes the motor a special type of motor, and the code treat that motor that runs a compressor <clears throat> in a different way. And it has the code has a whole article about it. We will study this article in details as we go through, guys, for chillers. But I want you to know, every time we have a compressor, you're going to be going to article 440. This is the article. And we see article 440 is the one that's going to be dealing with uh, any <clears throat> piece of equipment that have a, um, a compressor in it. That you can compress. Um, Refrigerant cycles, they call them, they have a word for them, that air conditioning and refrigerating equipment. So every time you compress and you create cool heating and cooling, cooling system, it makes the equipment, special equipment, and refer it to Article 440. Okay, so I have an AC, you guys are familiar with the AC, or chiller, the, it's a three-phase, so let's say, it really, this AC, for all practical reasons, we can make a single phase, this one. And I need to find uh, the full load current. So here's my AC. The full load amp of the AC is 32. I need to find the conductor and the over tissue device. You guys are designers. Conductor and over tissue device. Cool? Everybody's okay with that? Conductors and over tissue device. AC unit actually, unlike motors, motors we took, we, we get the full load current for motors from the code. AC units, they are stamped with their uh, full load amp right on them, and we use the full load amp. We don't use the code. So they're given, I have an AC unit that has a full load amp of 32 amps. I need to find the following. Number one, the feeder. Uh, let me say uh, conductors. Conductors. You guys, if you guys go to, and I'm going to tell you the, the code, if you go to article, um the conductors article 440.32 if you go to article 440.32 it will tell you the following you have to take 1.25 and multiply it by 32 so make sure you go where did i get the 1.25 press from article as you can see from article 430.32 so one point oops 1.25 times 32 equal, get to 40 amps, 40 amps. The second thing you need to do is you take your 40 amps, and since AC units, guys, most of the time, they're, they're, uh, they're 75 degree columns, so you can go to 310.15B and 16 under 75 degree column. Why 75 degree column? It's already given. AC units and motors and all this stuff, they come typically 75 degree column rated, even though the amps are small. So I have to tell you that 75. I'm going to say here, it's rated for 75. Oops, look what I wrote, 75. Is this the uh, beginning of this, this list here? AC, 75 degree column. Um, okay, what's the, what's the conductor for that baby? Number eight? Number eight. Number eight. How many conductors? It's a single phase, so I need at least and a voltage. Let's 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 power this baby at voltage 240, single phase. So how many conductors do I need? Two conductors, number eight, A, W, and G. Any question guys about that? We size the conductor for this AC unit. We size the conductor for this AC unit. We, uh, we size the conductor for a, this AC unit. Any question about this? It's, it's like, like motor, except, Phil, the only difference is you use a full load name on the AC unit itself. Unlike motors, where we use the name plate, not the name plate, we use the, the, the code, the tables in the code, but compressors and, and all this good stuff, we use the name plate on them. And there is a reason, guys, because it's a machine. 
And if it's a machine, it has full load current for the compressor and all the other associated equipment. They add them up and they give you a nameplate. Amps. Weighted load amps, they call it. Full load amps or weighted load amps. Number two. Number two, I need the over current protection device. For this one, Chris, my friend. And who is my friend here, too? Um, for, uh, for this one... Wait, it's 75, we got that one. For the overcome conductor sizes, short circuit, or did I look at the rating of individual compressors? I'm sorry, I think I gave you the wrong, no, 32 is not the wrong, no, 32 is right. Uh, 440, for this one, you need a code reference of 440.22. If you guys go to the 440.22, very easy. The only thing it, it tells you, 440.22. Huh? You're going to be using the name plate, right, on the equipment. This is a branch circuit selection. This is the short circuit. Uh, well, oh, of the branch circuit or the, this is not good here. We will, I promise you, we'll go the branch circuit selection current or the rated load amps. Yeah, we'll go there. For AC systems, um, Chris, the, there are multiple things in one box. And they rate them differently. You choose the largest and multiply by 1.25. Um, we will study this guys in details, but it's just for the time being, you have a full load amp on it, and you multiply by 1.25, just to simplify things. Since we're engineers and we like to complicate things, Okay, so the multiple, if you guys go there, say the multiplier should be 1.75, multiply it by the full load amps, which is 32. And oh, by the way, if you landed, so 32 times 1.75, you end up with 56, 56 amps. And oh yeah, if then, 75%, 75%. that's directly from uh, 440.22, if you read through it. And then you take the 56 amps, take them to 240.6, and what do you get? What's the next standard down? 50, and you have to go down. You have to go down. That's it. So you multiply size the overcome protection device, fuse or circuit breaker, you multiply by 1.75. If you hit non-standard, what do you do? You go down, you hit non-standard. Unlike motors, what happened with motors? When we were doing motors, we went up on the branch circuit, down on the feeder. Here we went down on the branch circuit and also down the feeder. That's it. Any question guys about this? Any question? Piece of cake? Can you guys say yes, Chad, piece of cake? Okay, if you go to okay, rate, 360. yep, no, 343, 440.22. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm saying I'm on page number 360. You're in the wrong page. 343. Are you looking? 343. That's why, probably. <laughs> Everybody's there, 343 guys. The uh, Almost the upper right corner, it has 44.22A. In particular, A actually is the one. If you read through it, it tells you. Now, Phil, if you read it also, it tells you if your AC doesn't start, then we, you can go all the way up to 2.25. That's only if you size and it doesn't start. But get go, from the get go, you go for 1.75. The overcurrent protection device is 50 amps. The cable is 80. Yep. And that's okay. Oh, okay, because then what about the clause about the thing not, the cable not being able to handle the, uh, the less than? You're sizing the overcurrent protection device to handle the inrush. That's why you're oversizing it. The full load amp, the motor full load, fully loaded, is going to carry only 32 amps. And your cables are rated for. 40 amps or more. So you're good for cable-wise, load-wise. 
why did we up why did we oversize our computation device to handle the rush of the compressor? So because it that clause about the cable not being uh, less than the opacity of the cable not being less than uh, there's exception for that. And motors. Motors. And transformers. There's a few exceptions. Yes, sir. If we're dealing with motors, not AC. AC is special. Okay? AC, you go down in both. How do I know why? Because you always guys go by the article. In the code, have articles. This article, if you read through it, doesn't tell you go up. So your options, either you go custom design yourself a special fuse that's 44.3, or you have to go to the next standard down. Make sense? Confusing a little bit with motors? Yeah. yeah. Just write to yourself a note. If it's an AC system, go down. If it's a motor, go up on the brand circuit. That's all. I'm sorry. I wish it was unified, guys, where you go up for all of them and make call it a day if you ask me. But it is what it is. You know, these are, that's, that's what makes the code a little bit kind of gray area is they go up on one, down the other. Okay, I have another example for you. This one is 130, 130 AC amps. This baby is 480 volt, three phase. And we need to do the same thing. We need to size a conductor and overcompetition device. A conductor and overcompetition device. I'll give you a few seconds to write it down. Okay, so I'm going to find first the conductor, number one. Conductors. I need for conductors, what did they say I need to go to which article? 430. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.32. 430.
240.6. What's your next standard down? 225. 225. You go down. 225. Done. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Now let's go to the fire pumps. We're going to do two examples for the fire pumps, exactly the same, guys. Identical. Exactly the same. And uh, now, before I go there, I want you guys to highlight these numbers and write next to them uh, which number? Right here. This number. Can you guys highlight this number and write to it next to it? This is later on, they start calling it minimum circuit ambicity. Can you please write next to that number minimum circuit ambicity? Rob, what the manufacturers of the ACP uh, system they do, if you go look at the chiller, they actually do the calculation for you in the factory. Did you guys hear me? This multiplied by 1.25, they do it in the factory, and on the nameplate, they stamp an MCA. If you're looking at the chiller, you're going to find an MCA on it. MCA stands for Minimum Circuit Ambicity. So all what you have to do then, Nick, take this number, which is 163, and size your conductor directly based on this number. Later on, we'll handle that one, but just write 270. The second thing I want you guys to write 270, Right here, this overcome friction device, write to yourself, this is maximum uh, over uh, current protection device. Maximum overcome friction. MOP, maximum uh, overcome friction, something similar to that. This is what the maximum over current protection device So that's what you want to want to write. Uh, that also will be on the plate. They will tell you. So see how easy they make it for you, Chris. They say, oh, by the way, go put the 225 amp fuse or circuit breaker. You just grab it and you put it there. No, you don't have to do that. We did the calculation that we did, guys. For the most part, we don't have to do it. It's done by the manufacturers for this type of equipment. But if they are not done, that's how you do it. Can I move to a motors, to chillers, uh, pump, chillers, pump, something, fire pumps. Let's do fire pumps. Two more examples about fire pumps, and then you guys are uh, excused to go eat to do something it's productive. Uh, here you go. So let's go directly to this is question number, example number three. Okay, fire pumps. Everybody knows what a fire pump is, right? Have you anybody seen fire pumps? Everybody saw a fire pump? Fire pump is supposed to pump the water in a building upon the existence of fire in your building. Reduce the casualties and all the stuff. When do you need a fire pump most of the time in risers? or if the pressure in the area is lower than a certain value. We don't decide when we need a fire pump. The, usually the fire marshal and the mechanical engineers who design the sprinkler system decide if they need a fire pump or not. We, being electrical engineers and designers, they said, we have a fire pump, now what do we need from you guys? Size the over device for it and the cable. Cool? All right, so for fire pumps, my friend, you're going to go to the code because it's special animal. The code has a whole article about it, 695, 695, special equipment. This is the code that talks about 695 NEC, NEC. Now I promise you we're going to talk about this article in details. The only thing I, want to, I need from this pump right now is two things. I need to be able to size the conductors and I need to be able to size the overcurrent protection device. That's all. The disconnect, we're going to size later the disconnect, the transformer that feeds it, the overload if needed, um, the controller, the transfer switch, all this, guys. If anybody want to be ahead of us, they're all in YouTube. I already did a few YouTube channel videos last year on it. If anybody wants to jump ahead, that's I do it usually in the commercial industrial projects, not now. Okay, but for now, step by step, 
you need to size number one. By the way, for fire pumps, two things. Number one, for cables, they size them exactly like any other motor. How, what do you multiply it by? 1.25. For over protection device, they size it based on the locked rotor current. Now, because of the locked rotor current, then you need, I need to give you, I need to give you uh, um, the code letter. Code letter. I have to give you the code letter for this. I want to make this code letter L. Code letter for this pump is L, right on the nameplate. And you're going to see why I need this code letter. All right. So let's start with number one. Uh, conductors. Conductors. I have a 100 horsepower motor. I need to find the F. And what's the voltage? Uh, shall we use a 600 volt? Well, since, oh, hold the side, hold your horse. Since, uh, well, this is a big horsepower. Let's, let's use a um, uh, 600, uh, a 480. Let's use a 480 volt system, okay? So take the 100 horsepower, take it all the way to 430.252, I believe. The place where you find the full load current for these babies. Uh, the tables. Okay, where am I here? Chad, four. There you go. The voltages. Change it. Okay. Uh, full load current for three phase. Uh, 250, zero, actually. 250. This is 250. If you guys go to table 250, you're going to find for a 100 horsepower motor, three phase induction motor, the full load current is under 600 volt is 99. Anybody can see it? This is page 338. 338. It's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I went to 480. Uh, at 480, I thought to change my, at 480, 124, right, Chris? 124, am I looking right? 100 horsepower at 480, which is 460. Uh, in the in the in the table, give me 124 amp. So this is 100. Yeah. 460. 460. Yep. You go to the closest voltage. So it should be 109 amp, right? No, let's go 100. 100. Yeah, but I'm looking at the 40 460. I know. I'm in two. Oh. Yeah, you're looking. Oh, yeah, you were looking at three phases. Yeah, it's looking at, this is three phases. Yeah, there you go, four, yeah, all the way. Yeah, you were looking at two phases, that's all right. Oh. Yeah, the two phases is not too commonly used. Then you take the 1.25, guys, multiply it by 1.4, and if you have a calculator handy, 1.25 times 1, 24 equal 155 amps, 155 amps. So step one, step two, step three, you're going to take the 155, multiply it by, uh, not multiply it, uh, take it to 310.15B16 under 75 degree column, and that will get you 155 wire size, oops, 155 amp wire size, 2 watt, right? 2 watt, 3 conductors, equals 3 pairs, 2 and on. Now the question would be, Chad, why did you multiply by 1.25? Let's go find the exactly where it tells you multiply by 1.25. This is for 695.6B2. This number here, is coming from 695.6B2. Okay, can you guys write this of a note? That 1.25, where the heck did that 1.25 come from? 695.6B2, right? 695.6B2. Everybody got that? Where we came up with, not from my basement. I would like to claim it, but I can't.
Okay. Any question guys about this? Number two. Now for number two, I need overcurrent protection device. If to for the overcurrent protection device, guys, you need to go to uh, six ninety five dot four B two. Six ninety five dot four B two. This is where it tells you what what, what I'm going to be doing right now. A. If you go to this article, I'm going to summarize it to you. It says size the overcurrent protection device based on the locked rotor current. The lock locked rotor current. Okay, how do you do that, Chad? What's the locked rotor current, guys? Step number one: take out, take it all the way to table four thirty. Dot. This is table four thirty. The locked rotor current. We highlighted it for you at one time. Uh, okay, 430. Uh, we're locked. Okay, 430.250 table. Okay, if you have the locked rotor current, we can get it directly from 430. There's two ways of doing it, but let's do it. The, there you go. Okay, 430.7B. 430.7B. If you guys go to 430.7B, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I think the 695.6B2 is saying you must start at 1.75. It says you're going to change that one to uh, 695.6B2. Yeah. It's saying multiply by 1.75. Not 1.25. Unless you can only record that. Hmm. Huh. 695.b2. Let me go look at the code. 695. Number of conductors. Transformer sizes. Okay, 125. Pump wiring. Conductor size. Yeah, B1. Uh, 6, 695.6b. B, fire pump, B1. Okay. Thank you, B1, not B2. B1, right here. Good, good catch, B1. Right, B1 will say that. B2 is special condition. Let's just use B1 now. B2, fire pumps, blah, 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 voltage drop. So fire pumps. Okay. How about the 695.4B2, 4B? 695.4B, B, they changed them, 695.4B2, overcurrent devices, yeah. The overcurrent protection devices shall be rated to carry indefinitely the sum of the lock rotor current, so the lock rotor current, that's okay. Okay, so if you guys go to this table, L, L is 9.99, the multiplier for L is 9.99. So who cares, Chad? Is what you need to do. You need to take I equal uh, table uh, 430.7B. I equal 9.99 multiplied by what? How many horsepower do I have? A, a thousand, a hundred multiplied by one zero zero zero. Divide by 1.73 times what's the voltage for A? This is where you guys find the locked rotor current of a motor. You size it based on the locked rotor current of the motor. Okay, to size based on the locked rotor current of a motor, you need to find the multiplier. Everybody knows how to find the multiplier from this table based on L. Where the heck is L came from? L, I'm giving you L. So L, table 430.7B, give you a 9.9, .9, the upper limit, Chris, you see it? Yeah. Upper limit. Okay, so you got the L, everybody got the L? The number for the L. Then, then you plug it in this formula. You take the number that you got for L, multiply it by the horsepower, by 1,000, divide it by the uh, voltage and 1.73, and what does that give you? 
9.99 times 100 times 1,000, divide by 1.73, divide again by 480. That will get you, I came up with 1,203. Anybody came up with 1,203? 1,203 amps. 1,203 amps. Um, yes, first. A hundred is the horsepower. A, a, a thousand is to change it from K, cash the K, to cash the K to a thousand. Okay. Cool. If you don't multiply by a thousand, this answer will be kilo amp. The, this is this formula here. This is your formula. I want to write it right here. To find, you need I K for multiplier times the horsepower times a thousand all the time. Divide it by 1.73 times the voltage. That's how we found the locked rotor current of a motor. This is the formula for finding the locked rotor current of a motor. Always. The only thing fail. And actually, my friend, this will change. If this is a single phase, you're going to drop the 1.73. Yeah, I'm going to see how it's the code letter. The code letter is right here. L. So I took the L, cash it into 9.9. .9. M, this M here is just code letter. Yeah. The code letter. Okay, the last thing I need to size is the actual size. What's the actual size? Chris, 1203 is not a circuit breaker size. So the last thing I want to do it in green here. The last thing I want to do it right in here. Take the 1203 amps. Take this one to 240.6. What's the next standard cell? 2500? Is it 2,500, guys? I think, I don't think there's anything between 12 or 3 and 240.6. 240.6. You have to go up. 1,600. My next standard is 1,600. 1,600. N. Oh, okay, 1600 M. Let's size it down. 1600 M. 1600 M. 1600 M. Any question, guys? 1600 M. That's it. So we found the overcome device. One more example like this, and then I'm done. One more example, just to get it. You guys can, uh, how you can give yourself as many examples as, as you want. All what you have to do is just take, make a 10 horsepower here and a letter M. And, so, and a voltage of one point. Or, well, 240, for example. And keep doing over and over, the same calculation. Okay, but I have one more example for you, though. Can I, okay, wait. Too fast, too slow. Press, go ahead. Now I want to remind you, fire pumps, we will study fire pumps in details. All what I need from fire pump right now is these two things. Cool, everybody? That's it. No overload, no disconnect, no transformer, no auto transfer switch, no controller at this point. Otherwise, uh, it will be interesting. Where the heck did that go? Okay, here you go. That was number three. This should be number four. I just jumped over. Okay, this is my number four. Here's my number four. A baby, a baby fire pump. Um, Chris, what what code letter do you want to give this? Give me a code letter. From A to E. 
let's give it a, a code letter E. Code letter E based on my friend um, Chris, okay? Voltage, I need a voltage for this baby. Anybody can volunteer a voltage? Three phase. Because you can't, why three phase, 50 horsepower, they don't make them in single phase. Uh, what is it? Uh, what did you say? 480. 480. Okay, let's make it a 480. We did 480 before. I want a different voltage than 480. 277 line to neutral. Um, that's single phase. They don't make them 277. That's a 480. 600? Let's do a 600 volt. 600 volt. What are your options, guys? Your options three phases 600, 480, 208, 240. That's it. Four voltages in the low voltage system. Okay, we do the same thing. I'm not going to write the code references because you guys are uh, master the at least. Let's do conductor. Conductors, the same thing 1.25 times. The first thing I need to find a full load current, though. So what's the 50 horsepower? 50 horsepower. Take it to a table. 430.250. Under which voltage this time? 600 volt. Anybody found it? How many amps that baby sucked under 600 volt? Anybody came up with number? 52, 52, 50 horsepower, 52, 52 it is. If you guys go, they're not going to find 600, you're going to find 575, the closest to 600, 575. Everybody's okay with that? If you're looking for 600 in that table, you're not going to find it, 575. So what is it, 52, right? 52 amps. Next, take the 1.25 times 52, 1.25, oops, 1.25 times 52, 65, 65 amp, and then the third step is 65 amp, take it to 310.15, B and 16, under 75 degree column, and that will get me 65, wire size oops 65 wire and wire size number six thank you how many conductors three conductors number six copper that's it chris any you get the uh 52 is under uh three phase yeah, 575. Uh, is that for 50? Are you looking at the right one? On page 338. Mm -hmm. Column 575. Are uh, you looking at synchronous motors? Go to the left. Oh, wrong. Yeah. You, okay. yeah, your default, guys, I'm sorry, there are two types of motors that run at 600 one synchronous motor, one induction. Unless you know otherwise, they're all induction motors. Good point. Okay, the last thing, number two, is overcurrent protection device. So I need to find I locked rotor current. Okay, now let's go find the multiplier for E, guys. Now we know where to go for E. For E, Chris, it's 4.99. So let me find first E. Let me catch E, do it the proper way here. Step number one, E, you take it to table four, 30.7B, I believe. Yeah, 7B, 7B, you're gonna get into 4.99. That's, now we cash the E. We convert it to, to value that we can use. Okay, so that's step one, step two, Plug that baby in the in the formula. I locked rotor current equal 4.99 multiplied by 50 the horsepower multiplied by a thousand because we're gonna catch the K. 
1.73 multiplied by 600. The same formula. So you're going to have 4.99 times 1,000 times 50 equal divide by 1.73 divide by 600 equal. 240. Anybody came up with 240? So 240 and. Now, I don't know about you, Phil, but this is not a standard. There is no 240. So we're going to go to the next standard. The last step, is it is that standard 240? No, I said it. Yeah, 250. So next, you're going to take the 240, 240M, take it all the way to, um, this is 240.6, and that will get you at 250M. Go up. 250M. That's it. That's as ugly as it gets. That will conclude chapter seven, guys. Any question? Now again, we just touched on the fire pump. Uh, promise you when we go to commercial, we're gonna do a lot of stuff about fire pumps. Disconnect auto transfer switch controller for the jockey pump. Now, if you read there, Chris, I'm sure you're reading this. It yeah, didn't say anything about the jockey pump and the fire pump. It's coming. We're assuming just one fire pump, no pressure pump, just one pump. And really, it's going to build on this. The same information stays, but we build more, more on it. I just don't want to move it too fast. So. Any question, guys? So that's about it.